map skills, not just hard paper maps like we all grew up with, but these kind of devices, GPS's. And now, cell phones that have apps that you can use for the same thing. And desktop that have the entire mapping feature available. So we're gonna go through this, almost like from the old school idea of a paper map to where we're at today with all these sophisticated devices that you should be taking advantage of. And very often people will say, how do you know? What are you doing that you can tell that precisely where you're at? And it really gets down to, one, knowing a lot about maps and map reading, and then having the proper devices and, and information at your fingertips to be able to do it when you're out in the field. So this map here is a map of an area in New Mexico. And you'll see there's a lot of white on this map. Everything that's white is private. And you can't hunt, you cannot hunt private land without permission from the landowner. So you look at how this white stuff kind of mingles in and sometimes creates some complication. And this is common to any surface ownership map. So the colors that I'm talking about today apply pretty much across the board. Whether it's a hard paper map like this, whether it's a digital map, whether it's on your Onyx map system, these colors and what they represent are gonna stay pretty much the same. So this green is Forest Service. Now you'll see that there's some yellowish orange pieces here. Some maps, they're bright yellow. Some they're this orangish yellow color here. That's Bureau of Land Management, BLM. So the Bureau of Land Management, BLM property, plus the Forest Service property, those are federal lands. Just about in all instances, they're open to hunting. I'm, I'm trying to think if I know of any that aren't, and I can't think of any. There may be travel restrictions to protect wildlife, to protect habitat. They might be permanent travel restrictions or temporary. Um, you can find that out by getting a travel management map from the local Forest Service office or BLM office. And when I say they may or may not be open, there might be a gate across this road. Or the gate might be open part of the year and closed part of the year and then you gotta walk or hike or mountain bike or take horses or whatever. So these blue pieces right here are called state trust lands. They are what the state's got in their enabling act, which is the legislation where Congress admitted the state to the union. So you can see up here, there's a big piece of state land. Here there's smaller pieces. Here there's smaller pieces. So you have this strange mix. These are really the three pieces of land that we can hunt on. And the, the craziness is these blue pieces, because they're state lands, every state has different rules. Green and yellow, federal lands, rules are pretty consistent because it's a federal level regulation. The blue stuff, state land, not so much. Make sure you know what the rules and regulations are in the state you're hunting for that state land board. So now here, here's a couple common questions that come up in this map issue. So someone might say, well, can I get to this chunk of blue state land out here by crossing right at that corner? This is called corner crossing. In other words, where that infinitesimal little point of intersection is, can I step from one piece, have my foot on one piece of public and then step over into another piece of public without ever stepping foot on the private? Um, I would say do that with a lot of caution. I would say be prepared to get a citation in most states if you do that. Whether or not that citation will stick depends on, in most instances, the county attorney, the, the, the attorney who would end up prosecuting the trespassing claim. Uh, there's a few jurisdictions where they've said, no, we're not going to prosecute that. Um, but as a general rule, uh, this is a good way to get in trouble. So. I, I wish it was different, but that's how it is. On, on these maps, all these red lines are roads. So you can see that this is a big county road here, and then it breaks off, and then it hit right here, it goes from BLM land and enters into private land. A lot of people say, well, can I just stay on that road? And this is where it's all over the map, all pun intended. 
that this, in this case in New Mexico, I'm familiar with this road. I can tell you that it is gated right there because this is not a county road. Now there's some roads, like this big road here, you can see it goes through private and you can keep going. And the reason that you can keep going is because there is a right of way, a public easement through that private property and that determines that you can keep going. So a lot of times you're gonna see these roads all over your map and the question is gonna to come to you, well, can I drive across that road? The answer is maybe. It depends. I'll have uh, a map with me. A lot of times I will have these map features, not a lot of times, all the time. These maps will be loaded on the chip I have from Onyx Maps. Now, and you're gonna see this on a cell phone, but you're really gonna see it on my desktop. There's the Hunt app by Onyx Maps. And right now I've got it pulled up on my cell phone. You probably can't see it. But on my desktop, it is amazing what I can do with layers and layers and layers. I can add layers, sort layers. I can get aerial. I can get whatever imagery I want. I'll overlay the surface ownership on top of that. So when I'm sitting at home, I'm just looking at all this stuff. And four years ago, three years ago, when I had like 12 different pieces that I was trying to connect together, Onyx Maps through their Hunt app, has kind of brought all of that to one point where that's all I need. And then when I'm on my desktop and I say, okay, this is where I'm gonna be hunting, I can save that map and that map gets saved up to the cloud. And then I can bring that map down to my phone if this is what I wanna use out in the field. And even if I'm out of cell service, I can put my phone on airplane mode, the GPS still works, that'll save battery, and I can cache the maps on my SD, micro SD card in here. So then I can just pull it up. So if you're gonna be a public land elk hunter and you wanna get serious about it, maybe you wanna hunt different states throughout your time of being an elk hunter, really understand surface ownership, understand how to read a map, get these devices, this hunt app from, from Onyx Maps, have a really good GPS, get the map chip. If you're more comfortable with the GPS than you doing the app on your cell phone, then by all means, use whatever works best for you. The way I hunt, the way you're probably gonna hunt if you're a public land hunter, that product is invaluable. It's worth every penny you're gonna spend on it.